In this video, we're going to be looking at backing vocals, how we can use them when we're tracking vocals, as well as creatively using warp modes and different aspects of live to give us a really cool backing vocal sound. So as an example, I'm going to be showing some new music with me and Heather Christie on this track for a new project of mine called Silk Drop. Now I turned off the backing vocal. I'm going to go over this whisper vocal later, but for now we're just hearing a single vocal take and the music. Sounds good. It's a really good recording, really good take. I did another article and video of how to make sure that your vocal takes are really good. Get rid of any noise, compression, all that sort of stuff to make sure it's a very good vocal take. You should check out that article at subaqueousmusic.com. But now I'm going to look at making this a little bit more interesting, a little bit bigger with backing vocals. Now, one of the first things I did was a whisper track. This was actually an idea that Heather told me, which works great for this particular track. And if we solo that, now remember she was saying this very, very quietly and I really brought up the gain on it. But when you mix that in with the other vocal, it begins to sound really cool. It adds a lot of depth to it. So within the track, now let's hear it without the whisper track. You can see how it adds another dimension to that sound. Now, when you're recording vocals, you're probably doing a lot of different takes. Well, if that's the case, then you can use those other sounds, those other recordings for your backing. Just like we did with the whisper track, you could have other takes that are a little bit farther in the back, usually turn down a little bit volume or pan differently to create that backing feel. Well, sometimes things don't happen ideally. Like, let's say you have a singer that just sends you one of their takes from their home studio and you're playing around with it, and you just have one take, but you want to get that backing vocal sound. Well, there's a few techniques that you can use to kind of create that, and Ableton Live is really good for that with warp modes and other things that we're going to look at. So to start, I'm going to duplicate this track. One of the first things I'm going to do is kind of pan them a little bit differently. I'm going to go this one quite left, and this one will go a little bit right. Now they are very similar, so you're not going to get a lot of that backing sound. It's just going to be a lot louder. So we really got to start tweaking and playing with this take that we had. Well, there's a few things you can do. One of the great things you can do in live is you can just add a bunch of different effects. Good example of that is like, let's add a reverb. Okay, I'm going to solo this. Now you might say, well, this is just adding reverb to the sound. Why is this unique? Well, I'm adding effects to change the sound, and then when I give it different timing, it'll start sounding like an interesting backing vocal. Good example of this is if I now move this. If I click and hold Alt, I can then move it off the grid. This is a super awesome trick. This is a great start, but I might want to do a few other things. Now, an advanced thing to do is to come in here and really begin to play with the warp modes. So I'm just clicking around to make a bunch of warp modes to play with to start. And then what I can do is I can come in here and hold Alt again to move it off the grid. And I'm actually shaping and changing the quality of this vocal take as if it was a completely different vocal take. Now this is all subtle movements, which will overall help to create this sense of a backing vocal. And you can do other things too. You can go ahead and you can add an EQ that's different to this one than the other one. 
Like, let's make this one a little bit darker. Now, we're not trying to get the best sounding quality out of this. We're just trying to make it a little bit different. So let's hear it and hear it in context. Now let's turn this one off. And let's turn it on. You can see how it's giving it, again, just a little bit more dimension. Ideally, you would have recorded a whole new take, and then you would have used that, but we didn't have that option. If you do, it'll sound a lot more like this one. Now, right here, you'll notice that she started to harmonize with what was originally happening in the track. Now, that's another technique of the singer of when they do another take to harmonize, go the fifth, the seventh, or, the, or a whole octave up from what was being sung before, and that'll give it a very unique, awesome sound. Now, if you wanted to, you could come in here, even on this version, I just spliced it, and then I can go up and down transposition. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> it's in beats mode, so it sounded a little weird. I generally like Complex Pro. Let's try that again. So... I'm starting to get some cool harmonies just by changing my transposition and my warp modes. I have a whole other video just on this about creatively morphing and changing vocals by using things like warp modes. I highly suggest checking out that article at sabaquismusic.com. It'll also be in the video description. And there you go. That's some quick tricks on creating cool backing vocals in Ableton Live, even if you only have a single take, as well as playing around with whisper vocals and other techniques of creating a cool, dynamic, interesting vocal with backing vocals. Also, go make sure you check out Heather Christie's music. Her solo project is called Cherokee, and it's absolutely fantastic. You can find it at SoundCloud. And there'll be even more links in the article at subaqueousmusic.com.